BBC Four Collections, archive programmes chosen by experts. For this collection, Simon Jenkins has selected programmes celebrating the people and places of London. More programmes on this theme and other BBC Four Collections are available on BBC iPlayer. The dawn chorus at the Tower of London is dominated by the cries of ravens demanding breakfast. John Wilmington, one of the Tower's 39 yeoman warders, better known as beef eaters, though nobody knows quite why, is also the raven master. At the Tower, ravens are precious creatures steeped in superstition. They must never fly away, and they don't. They can't, because their wings have been clipped. Within these walls, dating back to William the Conqueror, there's also a village with its own chaplain and doctor. Nearly 150 people live in the tower, and every day another hundred come in to work. Right, breakfast time. There's always been ravens at the tower. Always. In fact, there were so many ravens by the reign of Charles II that the residents petitioned the king to have them destroyed or driven out. But the old legend was told to the king about should they ever leave the Tower of London, a great disaster will befall England, and the royal palace would simply fall down. So as the king lived it at the time, he said, right, we'll, we'll keep six ravens and the rest can go. And we have six ravens to this day, and they have names, numbers, records are kept like soldiers. In fact, I go as far as to have a guest raven, just to be on the safe side. <coughs> it's a community, and uh, no community lives in harmony 100%. But you upset one of the young warders, then we stand back to back and fire outwards. In other words, I've got 38 mates if I'm in trouble at the Tower of London. I mean mates. We laugh together and we cry together. It's as simple as that. That's your bus pass, isn't it? Well, 65, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. your bus pass, have you? Yeah. <laughs> it's from my son, he's in the army. Dear Dad, sell the pig and buy me out. So I'll have to write him a letter. Dear son, the pig's dead, soldier on. Where's the keys? Have they gone? Keys to the bloody tower. In the box. In the box. In the Bywood Tower, the beef eaters get their orders for the day. Right. Off to work. It's off to work. Gentle boys, drunk of gentle. By the end of today, 12,000 tourists will have done the tower. of the Tower of London. So he's uh, one of the residents of the Tower, one of about 150 people who actually live here. And to be a, a, one of the yeoman warders of the Tower of London, um, excuse me, I don't think you're um, part of this group. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have seen where some of our kings and queens have lived. May I, with your permission, take you and show you where one or two of them have died. This way, please. Now, the last political prison to be held in the town of London 
was in May of 1941. Herr Rudolf Hess, the Deputy Führer of Nazi Germany. In the house where Henry VIII kept Anne Boleyn lives the tower's top brass. Good morning, Guardsman. The governor, Major General Giles Mills, retired. Thank you. That's right. How long have you been in the battalion? Hang on, sir. You enjoying it? Sir. Where, where were you before? Is it down at Pear Road? Sir. Yeah, so what, what you do, you were in a rifle platoon, aren't you? Sir. Well, well done. All right, carry on, please. Sir. Thank you. It's tough at the top. One can get very tired indeed, a lot of it on one's feet. So it's no sinecure, but it's varied, always varied. And it's people, of course, which is the fun of it. Good morning. Uh, I'm Hello. the governor. Uh, well, how are you? Okay. I'm Patsy Great. Dodge. Hi. Nice to see you. Where, where and did you I'm Bobby Dodge, Mississippi. Good, I have been there. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Good, but uh, not for a long time. And our children are with us. They're over there. They're, they're over there. Three uh, have you just arrived in the tower? Yes, yes. we did. Yes. Uh, have you been here before or not? Once. I've been here, but no one else in the family. But I, I think the advice, if you haven't done it, is to go quickly into the jewel house because... We did uh, that. The, you've done it? Yes. yes. That's why. And do you know where to go next? <laughs> Any Americans among us? Oh, no. <laughs> we do have to feel so sorry for our American friends at this point with absolutely no history whatsoever of their own. <laughs> they couldn't even get hold of this little bit first. Long before this was ever known as Traitor's Gate, it was always called Watergate. <laughs> in her own little room in the tower sits Sandy O'Connor, doing the same job her mother did for 20 years before her. Sandy encounters all kinds. The English are nice people, I mean, they're nicest people, but as tourists, you know, they're useless. They want all the attention and they're arrogant and they push up the front and, you know, they just want to be noticed in general. The English? Yep. Us? Yes, us. Us. Then you've got the French, they run in, do what they've got to do, run out, and then you've got to go and clean up behind them. But the Japanese, they're very quiet, they come in and they bow and they know whatever they want to do. How are the Germans? They're OK. They're very clean people. Uh, they're friendly. Uh, the best part is if you get a group of Germans and then you get English behind them. Uh, the English start saying, oh, Germans this, Germans that, not realising that at least one German amongst them can speak English and understand them. And then you just sit back and wait for the rail. Nein, wir kommen noch. Oh, we are coming now. Ja, yeah, wir yeah, haben yeah. uns die Karten schicken lassen nach Deutschland. Yeah. Yeah. Sie haben uns die sehr schnell geschickt. Wir haben uns sehr darüber yeah, gefreut. Ja, es ist in meiner Amt, dass sie kommt, die, die, die uh, Ausweis nicht für, für die, diese Zeremonie. Ja. Yeah. Uh, waren Sie in uh, Uellen Haus? Ja, yeah, haben wir gesehen. Ja. Yeah. Then, as you move around the side, you would also see the Kulin and Diamond. Before it was cut, it was that size. Believe it or not, right? And when you come out to the main window, that's when we have the Imperial State Crown with over 3,000 diamonds, rubies, emeralds. It's a beautiful crown. And that's the one the Queen will wear once a year, the state opening of Parliament. 80 pence will get you into the jewel house to see the crown jewels. Unfortunately, nobody has ever been allowed to film them, but maybe today the curator, Bob Melling, will make an exception. No, because that, it, it's, uh, that is, is, is the orders. I mean, and I, this is one of my jobs as curator of the jewels, that I enforce the orders and regulations as laid down in the jewel house. And the order, the Lord Chamberlain says the Crown Jewels will not be filmed, and so the Lord, the, the, the Lord Chamberlain is the Lord Chamberlain, and so the Crown Jewels are not filmed. Oh, I mean, a five, a fiver wouldn't. Uh, no, no, no way. <laughs> five pounds, not very much, is it really? Well, how, how much? How, no. how much would you? Nothing. Like the crown jewels and anything like that, I would be beyond price. You ever touch them? Uh, yes, I have touched them. Yes. Quite a nice sensation, really. You try the crown on? No, no, no. I wouldn't. I wouldn't even dare or even deem to try that. No. Oh, I'd 
thought they wouldn't have minded if nobody was around. No, I wouldn't take the risk. Plus, I, I have no wish to try the crown on. I mean, the crown is, is the monarch's, monarch's crown, and that's it. I mean, and so they're the only people who wear the crown. <laughs> only make-believe. Replicas used in the Towers Theatre of Education. <laughs> Jack Ketch was the executioner that day. He stood six foot seven inches tall and he weighed just over 17 and a half stone. But even so, it took him no less than five strokes of the axe. And even then, he had to draw his dagger and cut through the last remaining shreds of flesh. But we haven't finished there. <laughs> For some strange and unknown reason, it was decided they must have a portrait of the Duke of Monmouth. And so his head and his body were returned here to this town. A surgeon was given the task of sewing his head back onto his body. A scarf was wrapped round his neck to hide the scar. And an artist was given just 24 hours to paint that portrait. Now that portrait is still there today. It's kept in the National Portrait Gallery. And if by chance you should go there, now knowing your history, you will all know why. He was painted in the prone position and had such a pale and drawn look on his face. <laughs> what happens when the red light goes? <laughs> that means it's ready. I'm a damn Come and look. Every day, by special permission of the governor, 84-year-old Hilda Mandrell walks the tower with her dog, Patch. Now then, don't be naughty. Isn't he a good dog, guy? Eh? Seven years ago, shortly after being widowed, Hilda was going to end it all. She set out one day to buy sleeping pills. Then fate took a hand. I was walking along and I saw this little dog running in and out the traffic. And I thought, oh, that little dog's going to get run over because I'm an animal lover. And uh, I ran in the road to save him. And uh, this big lorry came along and nearly hit me. So I picked him up. Instead of going to Boots Chemist, I went into the police station and told the sergeant, because they all know me there, and uh, I said, I nearly got knocked down by the uh, car. So the sergeant said, well, take him home and keep him for a month, and if nobody claims him, you have him. He'll give you a new lease of life. I thank the almighty God for him coming into my life. He's given me something to live for. Hey, come here, lovey. Oh, you are a lovely boy. Come on this way. Come on. Good boy. Here comes a man with a mission. Ian Eves, keeper of arms and armory, is all of a dither. He's made a very interesting discovery. The untrained eye would probably have ignored it, but when Ian Eves spotted it, he pounced. We've got this visor pivot that was amongst our collection of bits and pieces, and it occurred to us that this might be the original visor pivot of this helmet. Does that excite you? The possibility that it, what, it, a button, a little button. Well, it, it does, insofar as it's an important uh, decorated piece and uh, it's proper that it's put in its right place and uh, it will show the original detail of the armour. I mean, we want, obviously want to sh show the armours as they were made so that people see them at their best. Is armoury something that's always interested you? Oh yes, it is since, since I was a boy. I mean, I think it started as a romantic interest, but as I got into it, I, I found there just more and more aspects that appealed to me. I mean, the design, the evolution, I mean, the artistic aspects of it, and uh, I mean, the history. There are just so many different aspects of the subject. You, you keep being excited the more you learn. That's an, original, that's an original piece. Is it, is it, is it matching? No, it's, it's not matching. This has got its original visor pivot. So, but this hasn't, and I'm just wondering if this could perhaps be the armour. This is also one of a similar style. Watch out. 
Pretty girl. Are you two twins or sisters? Sisters. Where are you? Where are you from? Um, Dallas, Texas. Dallas, Texas. Wow. Well, <laughs> you can't ever believe it. You don't come from there. Your legs are the wrong shape now. <laughs> What's you done with your horse? What? We're rather Thanks. shy sometimes of the younger ladies, particularly outside along the wharf. Because this girl come up to me, she was in quite a reasonably dressed young lady, and she said, can I have my picture taken? As usual, say, yeah, OK, love. And all of a sudden, this bloke's flashing away like mad. And I said, well, hang on a minute, love. don't cuddle up too close, you know. You've got to have a bit of decorum about this. And that was it, before I knew where I was, I'm in the middle of the escort magazine. Has she got her clothes on? She had with me, but later on she hadn't. <laughs> Round the parkway, yeah, she had. That's right. Showing wrong. everything she had. Well, this is the kind of way you can be trapped now. If they can't protect Princess Diana against people superimposing nudes on her, what chance have we got? All beef eaters are ex-soldiers with 20 years long service and good conduct. George Day has just been admitted. Once he lived in a Gloucestershire village. Now he resides in the Devereux Tower with his wife, Cynthia. George was always determined to end up in the tower. Cynthia, however, didn't share the ambition. No, no. Uh, I, I didn't want to come to London to live. That was my husband's. It was an idea that was, I suppose, born when I was a schoolboy and it bore fruition. It, it's, it's been more than I ever thought it would be, and I consider it to be the finest job in the world. It's a lovely place to live. I come from a village, so um, I could compare it to living in the village. Hi. Hello. Hello, Dougal. Look at you. The doctor's again. wife and the chaplain's wife. Dear, what you done with yours? Uh. Mine's locked off as usual in there. <laughs> what have you been doing today? Arning, the usual. Oh, dear. You've oh, got a committee meeting tomorrow, I haven't you? I have indeed, yes. Oh, Is that for the ski club? Excuse me. Uh, no, um, ladies' ski club, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. okay. And uh, then I shall be off again. And uh, you playing golf this weekend? Yes, on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's very nice. We've managed to fit it in. For the rain. Stephen Breyer, the tower gardener. Stephen is only 25, but already he's disillusioned. Trouble is, he cares more about his lawn than legend and superstition. What's your worst enemy? The birds, the ravens, are an absolute pest. Um, when we sowed some grass seed earlier in the year, we found that they were digging holes everywhere where we just put down the grass seed. Um, and they tend to bury their bones in these holes, of course. You see, when we drive our mowers over these areas, it ruins the blades in the mowers. And um, they also tear up a lot of the rubbish that like, pe people leave lying around. Um, that's another problem, the public. Um, you know, we tend to find that they, they don't regard what we do very well, and we find litter everywhere. So, you mean in the, in the perfect world, you wouldn't have any ravens and you wouldn't have any public? Certainly not ravens, certainly not public either, yes. Of course, you've got to have them, really, haven't you? Because if you didn't have them, there wouldn't be you, really. That's right. <laughs> Harry. You've got a bird in the jewel, huh? She's up there oh, at the yeah. moment. OK. What we'll do, we'll just keep our eye on him watch him. If he goes out on his own, fine. If not, tonight we will have to get the big nets yeah, out. Yeah, good enough. And he'll have to be removed before yeah. we can clock up and, you know, put the I'll, uh, I'll yeah. pass word on to the boys. Okay, if he was. Fine. Thank you. Thank you. We don't try and kill the bird. Nobody comes out with a shotgun, like, you know, and let's fly or anything death like that. I mean, you know. We, we, we get rid of it humanely and place it outside. Seven times out of ten, the bird will probably find it somewhere. Mario Serasol, in charge of souvenirs. All good, all good stuff, is this? Yeah, all the good stuff. All the proper stuff. <coughs> souvenirs normally are loaded about rubbish, don't no, they? No, not this. It's all pretty stuff. Not, no rubbish at all. No, we don't sell nothing made on or nothing like that. It's all good pretty stuff. Better. 
Do you like this job? Yeah, I do. Well, while I'm here, I feel like I'm in a foreign country. You know, with all different people coming around and all that. You are, you are in a foreign country. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I'm, no I'm, I'm not really. I'm from Gibraltar, see, I'm British. So, really, it's a part of my country, this. Uh, that's how I feel, isn't it? I have your guide who will conduct you round this royal palace. Gather round, boys and girls to the front, please, quickly. Come on in nice and close, ladies and gentlemen, please. Come on, come in nice and close. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. All right, I'll speak to you. Come and talk to me. We'll tell you that we're waiting for our girlfriend right it's in here. There. <laughs> right, right. Don't worry, don't worry. Okay? Don't worry about it. Okay? Don't worry, don't worry. Smile. Uh, every, everybody in the tower is looking for you now, okay? All my colleagues all looking, all looking around for the beavers. And as soon as we find the leader of the beavers, he'll come and collect you. Okay, now. Okay. Oh, he just walked right in. Okay, give us my camera. That one's useless. I've told you before, when you're sick, you ring the beef eaters. Well, you've got to give me a special number. We'll give, give you the number. Nice to see you back again. We'll give you the number. Thank you very much. Listen, I'm back in civilization again. You're found. They're on their way now. OK, they're coming up to collect you. Smile, then. Come on. Yeah. Who's that there, eh? Is that the leader of the beavers? Yeah. Well, come on then, a big smile now. Right? Hey. <laughs> you went for a drink. Where? Oh, you can't get a drink over there, darling. You can't. You can't. Okay. You can't. You can't. <laughs> Time, gentlemen and ladies, please. At a quarter to six precisely, the clearing bell is rung and the tourists get their marching orders. For Cedric Ramshaw and a group of privileged beef eaters, there are extra duties tonight. It's an excuse for getting into the full state dress of picture postcard fame. The ceremony is outside the tower, where all well-behaved tourists should be by now. I like your uh, company, but I don't think much here hours. Thank you very much. I think we've kept you for a couple more minutes than it's worth. Five, uh, I would say. <laughs> Good night. Come Bye. On, Thanks yeah. for the tour. Yep. Good night. Just give us the hand. This is what we do in Canada. Shake good hands. This is where the divorce court looms rough on. Yeah. 
Now, bleep out any naughty words. Now, this is not the whitest of roofs because it's a very hot day. I shall perspire greatly. And so the rough gets a little bit grubby and we don't wash them once we've used them several times they're discarded and of course unfortunately in this day and age we said men to the moon but we cannot get a rough made like this one is the others we get now the new ones are a lot thinner and they don't look so nice how are we getting on there okay okay lovey all right mean? yes you're doing a good job there tell me how tight you want it that'll, that'll, that'll do my eyes are popping out. Yes. We're well, nearly there. It's not as difficult yeah. as uh, one would imagine. I have done it on my own, but it is difficult. It's just a question now of fitting it in. Of course, I've had this uniform about seven years, put a bit of weight and I'm on just a bit then. plumper than what I was in those days, but still. Who wants a thin beef eater? Cuddly. Yeah, don't spoil my hair, dear. Okay. Now, so so what, what, about what happened when you've got all this on? What happens if you want to go to the loo? Well, you don't. You, you don't. don't. You don't want to. No, you don't. <laughs> you, don't go. you have to psych yourself up because you've got to undo it all. So what you do is you don't drink three cups of tea, which I've just drunk. <laughs> no. We're soldiers. We're disciplined. We. Uh, we're used to parades and not running away to the loo like some little child at school. Okay, my dear? Mm -hmm. Two more. Yeah. Looking like a star now. All right. Whack it, boys, whack it! <laughs> the ancient ritual beating the bands. They do a little number at each of the stones marking the old boundary of the tower. Whack it, boys! Whack it! Inside the walls, more familiar rituals have begun. Come on! Come on, boys! 